Hello web developers, um, I want to address a little bit of an, a less happy topic today and that is how to protect yourself when things go wrong and you're using CodeAnywhere.com. So first of all, I'm a big supporter of CodeAnywhere. I think that web-based in, uh, integrated development environments have a bright future and um, I use CodeAnywhere for working on personal projects. I use it sometimes for working on school projects or client projects. Um, it works and it actually works really well and it's fairly reliable. Um, there have been moments um, when things don't work as planned though. And part of the thing that I see my students struggling with sometimes is the idea that um, sometimes you it's better to just sort of throw something away and make a new one than it is to figure out what's wrong with the thing that you were working on and actually fix it. Um, and one of the major paradigms of Code Anywhere is the idea that uh, you have um, you know, sort of unlimited ability to create new development boxes and, um, and they don't cost you anything and they don't, you know, take up any extra resources or anything. It's just a little bit of time. Um, so when things go really wrong on Code Anywhere, uh, you can usually recover very quickly, especially if you've been doing just a couple of things to help make stuff better. So that's what I want to talk about today. Um, Right now I've just logged in and I see a uh, error connection refused on my uh, container and that's because my container's not running, I think, and um, my, my terminal's not up and running and I've got this error message and it's um, super scary and kind of freaking me out. So what do I do? I often get this question. First of all, um, what's important to remember is that every all the work that I had here is safe because I follow my own best practices and I push my code up to GitHub where it is stored. And so if I, I was not able to recover this container at all, I would be able to make a new container and clone out my latest work from GitHub. Now that's a pain in the butt and you don't wanna to have to do that every single time you log in and you often don't need to do that. But if worse comes to worse, that's an option and it's really important to remember that that option exists. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this and then I'm going to right click on the container name and I'm going to open up the SSH terminal and lo and behold it connected again. Usually that old computer axiom, did you try turning it off and turning it back on again? That's basically what's happening. Remember, your your development containers that you create are little computers in the cloud that you're using for development purposes. They aren't running when you're not working on them. They're not a hosting service. Um, this is lightweight and disposable container that can just be used to run your code while you're working on it. So again, sometimes weird things will happen because a container has um, stopped running or doesn't want to restart running and there's all kinds of reasons for that and it might have something to do with your code but it often doesn't have anything to do with your code so always good to try just restarting it another thing in the menu here you can always turn off a container or restart a container um, if you enable always on it does become a web server and then you might incur some billing from code anywhere so be be careful about enabling always on but um, definitely keep in mind that you can turn off and restart containers by just right clicking or alt clicking on the name of the container and that will usually get the container to go again if I click restart right now you can see that it stops the container I get the message that the container turned off so my terminal cannot connect to it at all and then it's restarting the container now the container is started so this terminal session is dead but if I right click and open up the SSH terminal again it'll restart reconnect to the to the container no problem so I'm able to see what's happening and easily restart my containers and I can do this on each individual container remember that your project is set up so that it will when you hit this global play button it will play whatever containers are in the project preferences and you can view that by going here to project and saying general and if you don't have any any settings here you're actually um, overriding the default settings there are ways that you can say run this container or that container but for the most part I find it easier to just manage each container 
using the menu on each container itself. Um, obviously, if you're working on a project that involves multiple containers, it's worthwhile to set up your project preferences and your project settings to actually run the containers that you want to run. Your project settings, I believe, are right there, yeah. So right now, there's only one container and it's set up to run it when the project runs. So that global play button should work pretty okay. Um, but you can always alter this if you add multiple containers. So often the problem is that either your container has not started because it's not actually listed in the configuration or because um, some odd thing happens like what just happened where it decided not to beautify. Um, uh, I think we copied that file actually, so that makes sense. Um, so your, either your container's not in the project configuration properly, and so it's not running by default, in which case you, you probably can just get by by right-clicking on it and running it manually. Um, if it's off, then you can always click start, you know, with that, that button will show up. Um, or uh, something's happened, um, and it might just be that you have an old SSH window or an old file window that's no longer able to connect to the container, in which case the best thing to do is to just close it and then right click and either open up a new SSH terminal or click here and open up the file again and it will usually open up just fine. Um, and then finally the worst case scenario if you have done, if you if you remember to every time you end your session to just run your, your git commands, git status, git add, git commit, and then git push then your git repository on github or wherever you're hosting your Git repository is always going to be um, updated and have your latest work. So if I wanted to, I could simply destroy this container and then create a brand new container. And as you can see, when, once I destroy it, obviously these things are no longer valid, so I can close them. I create a new container and um, I think that I was actually encountering another problem that I encounter occasionally with uh, Code Anywhere that was where it was not properly updating my um, it was not properly updating my repositories list, so it's not showing me my Yo Demo repository. For some reason, it hasn't liked showing me that, but I can always add it manually from the URL if I just go to GitHub.com Yo Demo then I can always copy this clone URL here and paste it in and create my container that way. So that's another way to work around. If GitHub doesn't properly uh, list all of your containers, you can always just clone it directly from the URL the way that you always normally would. I do want to create this with an HTML5 stack. And I'm going to, um, uh, I'll, it doesn't really matter whether I use Ubuntu or CentOS. Um, I'll stick with Ubuntu. It worked last time, no problem. So I create that. Oh, and I need to name this container. So I'm going to call it Yo Demo 2 and create it. And now it's going to go ahead and deploy that container. So, of course, once it creates a new container, I get the message about the demo container being created and it tells me about it and what all the features and the URL for it and everything. And then I have this container here and if I run an ls I can see that I see my files there no problem. So I can start running my npm install and and then eventually my bower install and that will be all set up. So as long as I make sure to commit my changes and push them up to my GitHub repository, that is the way to recover from the worst possible error when you have to destroy the container that you're using and then recreate one from GitHub. And it's kind of a pain if it happened every single time, but it definitely doesn't happen every single time. Um, on the rare times that it does happen, it's often easier to take the five minutes that it takes to recreate the container and reclone the project and then, um, and, and then get going on working rather than trying to figure out exactly what happened. Because again, what happens to these containers has a chance of being related to your code, but a much greater chance of being related to just things that happen to the sort of um, disposable containers that you're using on Code Anywhere. And that's part of the, the beauty of Code Anywhere is that we can easily create these workspaces quickly and cheaply, and we don't really have to invest a lot in, in keeping them running or keeping them perfect. So 
I hope that's been helpful. I hope that helps you recover the next time Code Anywhere starts doing odd things. Uh, remember to always commit and push your code after you finish every working session, and that's your guaranteed out. And otherwise, remember to explore your right-click menu, your preferences, and your project configuration when things aren't working the way that you expect them to work. So take care. Happy developing. Bye.